Okay. We'll start with Alexander. And uh, just to preface it a little bit, he worked as a, what was called a declaimer. He, he lived in the, in the early 1900s and he made his living by standing up. He was a very good looking man and he would stand in front of an audience and he would give a, an oration. So he would say, to be or not to be, that is the question. And he would, he'd be talking and he was talking away and then suddenly his voice became thin and disappeared. And he was utterly shocked. This is his living, and he couldn't work out. There was no particular reason why this should have happened. But he had this insight. He thought, it's something I'm doing when I stand that's making my voice disappear, which is a very odd thing to think, but it was, he was absolutely onto it, and he was brilliant. So, what he did was he stood, and he set up a whole series of mirrors so he could look in a mirror and he could see himself from the side from the front from the other side the good profile not the good profile and he started to talk and as he talked he talked and then his voice started to disappear and what he saw was this he saw that as he talked so if i turned to the side as he talked he would do this. Now, as he did that, you can, I don't know, you may, should be able to hear that my voice, as I straighten up, my voice, and how my voice changes. So, what is actually happening, his insight is that his, as he slumped forward and pushed his chin forward, the space for the sound to be made was crunched down and therefore his voice got thinner, reedier and eventually it disappeared. So his insight was it, I need to change something and I'll change this point which is where his neck joins his head and this is called occipital C1 joint. It's a unique joint in the in the spine and this head, your head with all its brains and all its bits weighs 14 pounds. It sits on two tiny little knuckles. They are very small. They sit down on the C1, the spine C1, which is Really, if you were to look at it, it is acting like a washer between the head and this supporting stack. And this is where 50% of the rotation occurs between C1 and 2. But between occipital and C1, the movement is a gliding movement. And this movement is called nutation, N-U-T-A-T-I-O-N, nutation. And as what he was doing was he was slumping down here, pushing his head forward and nutating, sliding this joint forward. In so doing, he was creating a new point of balance. So, as he stood up straight, here is where his head was, as he slumped forward and pushed, he increased the curvature of his neck, his head slid back and created a new point of balance which was quite different from the original and which had a whole lot more tension in it and closed off his, his um the back of his throat and so his voice disappeared. So from this came the insight that I have, have to change and he called it his primary point. Now the primary point to do this is, some, is quite very, is, is, is very cool. Okay, so the first thing is to imagine that there is a string from the back of your head not 
the, not the middle, but the back of your head, because because of that movement of nutation, you need to lift the back of your head forward. And so the movement is, you feel the back of your head, so I'm collapsed down, and now I start by lifting the back of my head up. And as I lift the back of my head up, my neck elongates and my chin comes forward and my voice is free and is easy. So that's the movement. And if I use both hands, which is much easier, if I put two f a finger here and here, just under the base of my skull, I'm forward like that, I lift the base of the skull up, and as I lift up, the neck lengthens, and my head nods forward like that. Now that feeling, what it does is it creates lengthening of your neck and the lengthening of your neck frees up the facet joints at the back. Now they can glide, previously they were all crunched into each other and turning was limited. So your neck lengthens, the head tilts forward because you're correcting the nutation of occipital C1 and as the neck lengthens the position of your head, your neck lengthens, it straightens up but the position of your head comes forward and the point of balance shifts from the back here, shifts forward until it comes to from the middle of your ear and you have altered everything. So the feeling is one of lengthening, your head is floating, your, you nod, you nod your head forward and you reach a point and this is a very beautiful thing and when people feel it, it's like pew, the light goes on. What happens is they come in and they tense, everything's tight, it's shortened, they're full of triggers because as I described before they're not, they're holding themselves in this new balance which creates a lot of tension in all those posture muscles. Now they lift, 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 bend, just nod your head forward and you're seeking for the moment and it's a very subtle thing where suddenly all the tension goes. It's like, oh, there's nothing there. You live with this constant pressure, which you kind of adapt to because we adapt to anything. And that pressure at times will become pain, will cause headaches, cause shoulder, all down to here. But the moment this point is reached, suddenly you find this, there's nothing, you don't have to do anything, your head is floating, all the tension goes, it just turns off. Your body's saying, ah, that's how we used to do it. 